everybody, my name is Spammels and welcome to Battleship Yamato VR of the HTC Vive. The Yamato was a World War II era Japanese battleship, noteworthy for being the heaviest and most powerful battleship ever created. However, she did not survive the war as she was sunk April 7th, 1945. Now this experience is a faithful 3D recreation of the ship in virtual reality so we can explore and learn and experience what it was like to be on board the Yamato. So without any more stalling, let's begin! So welcome to the game! everybody we're here in Hiroshima on some sort of quayside many a lifeboat are plenty over there it seems a bit weird I don't know why the lifeboats are like that who would be in such a rush to get off the land to the quayside that yeah that way that way thanks mate yeah that's right Wibush. there's a little boat waiting for us how's it going boys I'm the tourist thank you Whoop. holding on mate are you okay you look very, very prone. He's still saluting. Goodbye, mate! Oh, I can walk around the little boat a little bit. I should probably behave. Hang on, I'm stuck. Oh, God, I'm inside here. Well, this is pleasant. I feel like a proper tourist now. <laughs> That's cool. So the ships are kept offshore for confidentiality reasons. This feels really good. Like, as a generic little boat sim so far. The water looks nice. The boat is performing well. The graphics look lovely. Character models look great. Sure, it, it's made, it's got Japanese native language and it's got kind of a text to speech English translation going down. Hi! That must have been the other sightseeing team before I'm going on board. Is it worth the money? We'll find out in a minute. Because this experience is not free. There is a demo version, although I don't know how much of the game that contains. But I think this was like a £30 game, or experience, game is such a slip of the tongue. But I think this cost like £30, something like that. I got it on discount for £20, so it barely be worth it. <laughs> is that the Yamato? I was expecting something bigger. No, that's not the Yamato. That is a Kaguro type destroyer. Traffic between Gure Port and the Anchorage area is frequent with starting the war against the US and the UK. That's awesome! You know, every year I go to Portsmouth here in England, it's uh, home of the, the British Navy, the Royal Navy, blah blah blah. And this feels like the harbour tours you can do there, because they've got all the battleships in dock, and you go around on a boat like this, and there's a guy like, doing just that, that is a bloody blah, blah destroyer type thing and stuff like that. This is really nice. Go inside. I don't want to go inside. I guess if you get motion sickness, I don't know why you would. This is a really flat, calm ride. But I guess that's for motion sick people. Oh, hi. Are you feeling motion sick? I can see your bottom. I'm king of the world. There you go. Did it. It's a thing I did. I just got really tall all of a sudden. Mate. There she is, boys. The Yamato, everybody. That's the one on the left. That's another destroyer thing. I got shadows. Again, the quality is really good so far. I'm really, really impressed. I'm really glad this is good. Music's a little bit cheesy. I wonder if they play this for all the tourists. <laughs> so I do not know a great deal about the Yamato. I've only basically read a couple of Wikipedia pages, which is not anything to go by. But from what I understand, uh, as Japan was running out of fuel and resources and stuff like that, and they were trying their best to defend, they ordered the Yamato to go and beach herself somewhere and fight until destroyed. But whilst, Jesus Christ, but whilst en route to that, she uh, got sunk. Look at them, they're all stood on the side waiting for us. Oh, God. That's really impressive. That is really impressive. Okay, we're spinning. We're spinning. So hang on. Mate, you're really close. Hang on. Sorry, I didn't mean... I mean, very drawn-out introduction, but very impressive. It's definitely doing the job. Thank you for the ride. I will never forget this. Smooches. Boys, I'm coming aboard. Right, boink. And boink. Right, boarding the ship. <laughs> Stop staring at me. It's weird. <laughs> boink. A uh, boink. Hey, buddy. Oh, is that for me? Can I have this? Are you giving me a present? No? Okay. You just... That's not how guns work, you know, right? Hi, boys. God, this is all... 
This is awkward. Boink. Tribute gun. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, mate. Me. He's still going. Order arms. Welcome to the Yamato. I am Takianagi. Although my battleship has just been commissioned to become an actual warfare troop ship as soon as possible, we are in training hard together with a total of 2,300 people. We are planning to show you a gunnery firing exercise today. We will leave soon. I recommend you to observe the upper deck first. Sorry, I have to go to the bridge. Please come to the bridge later. See you later. Bye. Nice meeting you, mate. Where'd everybody go? Oh. Oh, what? Jesus. Okay, well, we're, we're underway, everybody. We're at sea. And it looks bloody amazing. This feels like a combination of kind of like the quality you might expect out of Titanic Honor and Glory, coupled with that, that VR experience we did called Magnificent Ships Volume 1 and 2. This is amazing. Okay, mate, can I come see you? A boink and a boink. Hello. Hey. Uh, today's voyage, overview of Yamato. What is the tour route? Well, I'm guessing the bit's in red. <laughs> we are there. That's what that means. We are there. It says it clearly right there. So, step one. Oh, God, it's a 12-step course. To the bow, up the port side, heading aft, cannons, the stern, back up again. Inside, oh my god, this is a massive route. Okay, so I'm gonna have to split this into multiple episodes. Yes, I'm talking to you, mate, right. Because your ship's so bloody big, mate, right, I'm gonna have to record this in a couple of different sequences. So step one, we'll do the exteriors. Step two, we'll do interiors. And then if there's anything left over, we'll put that in a third video. Yes, mate? Yes, mate. Feels a bit strange that I'm alone. I feel like there's someone looking over my shoulder at all times. Oh, wait, where am I? Am I doing that again? Am I looking off camp? There we are. Right, sorry. I need to get, like, something that says this way is forwards. Right, feet on ground. Stay on ground. Okay, so let's go to bow. It's a very clean and clear open deck. Like, there's no deck cannons up here. There's no real obstructions, breakwaters or anything. Oh, my God. Well, that's a view. Can I climb up there? Yes, I can. I mean, I wouldn't be stood here with those bad boys firing over the top of my head. In fact, I think the blast wave might push me over. <laughs> and looking forward to... Oh, wait, there was a climb there. Okay. Buddy! Okay, let's go down. Boink. Boink. Let's go to the very tippy tip of the bow. Sup, buddy? Well, that's strange. I guess... Not that you'd be up here fighting. If you're here fighting, then you've got bigger problems. But I guess it's fantastic shielding. Get a gun up on this. Poof, poof, poof. So wait, is this thing on the other side? Oh, God, there is. There's a ginormous flower on the other side of it. Hang on. Look at that. Ginormous petal flower thing. That must be significant for things. I don't know what. Jeez, look down. Well, that's all kind of terrifying. I should stress, I should not be here. I'm using some kind of cheating to go beyond the play space. I mean, if I... Oh, ah. Oh. There you go. Yeah, there's nothing under there. <laughs> but that's terrifying. This is the last place you'd like to be on a moving ship. <laughs> ah! Swimming simulator. <clears throat> that feels weird. That feels really weird. <laughs> Where I just thought. It's like... <laughs> yeah, the Yamato simulator. It's a big battleship recreation. Nah, mate, it's put me in the water. Let me swim for a little bit. I'll have much more fun. <laughs> okay, we're back on deck. Thank you for everything, soldier. Or navyman, seaman. Seaman, that's the correct terminology there. Thank you, seaman. I shall make my way. So we're now going down the port side of the battleship. That is an... Hang on, let's back up a little bit. Back up a little bit. Is that all in frame? I hope it is. That's amazing. That is a sight. That's a screenshot moment if there ever was one. So I have to admit a little bit of ignorance in this case. When I read that it was the largest battleship ever, I kind of thought to myself, 
Well, surely modern battleships are larger than this. But like a dum dum, <laughs> the, the battleship, as far as I'm aware, after subsequent Googling, doesn't exist anymore. They were retired after the war. Modern warfare uh, battleships aren't really applicable anymore. It's all about aircraft carriers, nuclear submarines, and long range missiles. You don't need ships like this anymore. Like, they're super expensive to run and crew and blah de blah 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 Like, they have smaller ships, but not ginormous ships of this caliber. At least that's what I garnered from the internet. Not an expert, nowhere near an expert. I'm just a regular Joe looking around a battleship. Is that a light? It's connected to that cannon. Maybe it's part of the targeting. I'm gonna climb this. Oh! I mean, if they started moving right now, I would, I would definitely go to brown alert, you know what I mean? You can climb down the front bit, I'd rather not. Hell of a view though, beautiful day for it. Jesus, it's so bloody tall. Can I ding the bell? Please tell me I can ding the bell. If I can get close enough. Bing, bing! Yeah, that worked. Boys! Right, I need to pick up the speed a little bit. Do you have any questions? What are your questions? About the 25mm machine guns, performance of the machine guns, the fire control systems, and what is control firing? There are two types of firing, which are controlled firing and direct firing. In controlled firing, you will be remotely controlled by the firing commander in the front tower. For controlled firing, you only replenish the bullets on the machine gun side. If for some reason it becomes impossible to control, direct shooting must be performed. With that, you must manipulate Jeez. and fire the machine gun manually. That was cool! That stuff started to move! So wait, can we talk about this other stuff? Will it make that stuff move? Amazing! So he's just talking about those guns up there. Right, I'm done with you. What well, you got to tell me, mate? The taller tower in front of us is called the front foretop. What, the, the really big there? Right, I guess we're done with you. Thanks for all your assistance, boys. You've been very, very informative. This feels questions? like... No, I don't. Leave me alone. This feels like I actually am on a tour of a historic ship. You know, like if you go to Hexman's Belfast or any other historical ship for that matter. This feels really nice. This feels really well made. It's definitely worth the money, I'd say. Definitely worth the money. I feel like I'm spending a lifetime in here, though. I need to go a lot faster. This video is going to be actually online today. <laughs> What's the height and angle of the gun mount? Performance of the gun, cylinder device, fire control. But like, we've already seen them, mate. Ah, now this guy. Can you make that gun do things? Hi. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Can you make that do stuff? Roll of the secondary battery. Urgh. Here is the 60 caliber, 15.5 centimeter secondary battery gun. Originally, it is equipped on Mogami class or heavy cruisers. These secondary batteries are used against light cruisers or destroyers. That's amazing. That's so cool. It's coming back. Okay, performance of it. The shell weight is 55 kilograms. The initial speed is 920 meters per second. It has a 27,000 meter firing range and has a maximum fire rate of seven shots per minute per gun. It is able to shoot through 9.7 centimeters of armor plate from a distance of 20,000 meters. That's cool. Is anti-aircraft fire possible? The elevation can be up to 75 degrees. The maximum depression angle is minus 10 degrees. Anti-air firing is also available. However, to load the ammunition, each gun must return to the loading angle. What, is this the loading angle? Okay, well how many rounds? Of the four turrets, two of them are placed on the center line and can fire from both sides. So they have 150 rounds per gun and 120 rounds of ammunition per gun are stored in each of the left and right side secondary battery. You're amazing, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, those cannons are moving too. Why did they stop? I didn't see that moving. Wait, do it again. Do it again. Make that one move. That's awesome. And scary. Imagine being stood here as they do a full broadside. I mean, the whole ship must rock. It 
it must be deafening. It must be terrifying, but even more so, it must be amazing. <laughs> so let's get up and look at this. Look at this. Bonk, bonk, bonk. I mean, you can't help but be impressed by the sheer vastness and size of it all. It's freaking intriguingly awesome. It's an engineering marvel. It's crazy that so much could actually float. <laughs> so I can't climb up on that, but I guess I don't need to. Um, I have a feeling like when we're all done, I'll probably be able to like cheat my way to places we shouldn't go. But we'll we'll come to that later. Right, boom. So we're heading to the stern right now. Everything today is all silky smooth. Like just smooth edges. All like encompassed. But here, everything is all like kind of compartmentalized. And I suppose that might be to do with like fire suppression potentially. I don't know. But I mean, if I go a little bit up. Hang on. It's just like there's a bit. Then there's a bit. Then there's a bit. Then there's a funnel. Then there's a bit. And everything's just bulging and like it's just puffy. It's 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 crazy awesome. Anyway, right. Continue aft. Ah, these are the airplane airplane sling things. Hey, buddy. Ooh. Oh, there's a garage door down there. Well, let's back this up a little bit. A bit close. So here you go, you've got like a little train track system so you can get these into loading positions and out. Wait, if you fire those cannons now, that plane is going to be torn to shreds. And that's a crane. Oh, so you bring them out the hangar, lift them up, and then drop them onto the train tracks. That's pretty cool. Oh, so they fire from the inner deck, that crane will swing. No, but how does that track link up? Well, let's talk to some people and find out. I'm sure this guy will tell us. Hey, about the catapults. This is a device called a catapult that launches aircraft. It accelerates the seaplane using powder. When the aircraft returns to ship, it lands on the water and is lifted up with the aft crane. Oh, really? That's weird. I guess it makes sense. But a water landing, I, I guess it's not quite an aircraft carrier, is it? Kind of. This is a jib crane. We will use this crane to bring in and out the seaplanes and boats. I don't know how I feel about landing in the water and being craned back on board. I'm kind of scared about that. Here, facts talking to us, mate. Let's go check out this guy. He's the body airplane, so I'm sure he'll show us something cool. Hello. This is an aircraft called the Mitsubishi F1M. Its main task is to observe the gunnery impact point against the target from the sky. Recently, the range of the cannon has become great, so great that the shells fly over the horizon, and it has become difficult to observe impacts from the ship. To solve the problem, we use aircraft to observe impact conditions from the sky and report them by radio. That's clever. I've never considered that before. If the cannons are firing so far into the distance you can't even see if you're hitting or missing properly, then yeah, just send an aircraft up. How clever. Okay, uh, the future of the blah, blah, blah. During observation of the enemy fleet, interference of enemy aircrafts are assumed. So they are equipped with two fixed 7.7 millimeter machine guns on the front of the aircraft and a slewing 7.7 millimeter machine gun in the rear seat so that they can fight with enemy aircraft. That's cool. This is very impressive. I'm very impressed. I really am. I don't know what to say. I'm kind of speechless a little bit, but I saw something here. Look at this, look at this. We're overhanging the side of the hull. You wouldn't catch me standing here. You would not catch me standing here. You would not definitely get me jumping. I can climb down this bit. Go on, there's a little, little, little peak. Oh, why, 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 Delilah? Shipboard boat hanger. Oh! Look at that, that's a door. And that'll flop out. I'm guessing a crane will then slide out of the cavity. And you can, that's cool. Well, this is a nice little private balcony, I suppose. Again, wouldn't like to be here. Imagine if you get a bit of bad weather going on, it'll sluice up on here like nothing. 
Way too close to the waterline. We're not going to go inside just yet. That's for another time. Back up. We're not done on the stern just yet. Down here. Ba ba ba. Okay, so we're still on the stern. Oh, there's a boat there. That's cool. Nice little storage space. Oh god, that weird. That trips my eyeballs out a little bit. I'm half inside, half outside. Storage space for long boats. You want to row ashore? Boom! Come get your boat. I suppose the same crane that picks up the the airplanes will pick up the boats. Slide them to the end of this and you're away. Aircraft hangar. But we're not going to go in there just yet because that's inside stuff. That goes back upstairs. Okay. Go straight to the stern. Hey, mates! What have you got for us? I think you're our final tour guide of this episode. It better be interesting. Wabush. About the stuff in the aft. Hey, this aft. Oh! It's an amazing aft. Look at that aft. Oh, woof. We hoist the ensign on the aft staff. Every morning, right on 8 o'clock, while we are anchored, we hoist this ensign with a trumpet salute. When preparing for the battle conditions, the ensign will be hauled down and re-hoisted to the guff of the aft mast. Cool bits. It looks great, and it's flowing in the wind really nicely. And the weight looks nice. Hi. You're really close to me, aren't you? You're blinking. Oh god, okay, it's like <laughs> personal space issues. I love you, I love you, I are oh, rejected. Outside, move away. I guess that's more or less everything. Again, the deck seems kind of clear. You only got a couple of mooring bollards. Not a lot to see. Or oh, there's a crazy ladder there. I don't know why that ladder's there. Wouldn't get me on that for anything. That'd be terrifying hanging on to that in the middle of a storm. Only an idiot would. Anyways, right, well, we're done. So let me get the headset off. We'll have a little bit of a chat. Hi, everybody. So this has been Battleship Yamato VO of the HTC Vive. I'm very impressed. I am loving this. It's great fun. And I feel like I'm actually educating myself, if only slightly. <laughs> There's a lot more I could be taking in. But for the context of a video, I have to keep the pace going. But this feels like the kind of experience what we did today. You could probably spend a couple of hours doing that. It's kind of like in a real museum where you just kind of go at your own pace. You can stay and look as close as you like at any of the things. And definitely recommend kind of modding your Vive a little bit so you can definitely fly off the map a little bit and get some other views that you otherwise can't get. But no, loving it. Loving it. I'm looking forward to going inside, seeing what they got for us. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this too. If you did, leave me a comment down below of your thoughts and opinions. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.